Life is a video game. Whether you know it or not, you're playing a game every day. In video games, you know, you're just trying to get to the next level. As humans, I think we're just like really interested in watching the number accumulate, whether it's a bank account or, you know, promotions or any other aspect of life. We just strive to become the best version of ourselves. My name is Brian Alcazar. I was born and raised in Queens, New York. I'm known as a street photographer, but I'm also a video game developer. When I was a kid, I played games religiously. It was the first thing I would do when I wake up, and it was the last thing I would do before I went to bed. Growing up in the 80s and 90s, New York probably wasn't the safest place, so my parents were probably thrilled that I was just in the house playing games all day. I played my Nintendo endlessly. I played Mario Brothers every day, and I got really good at it. It was just rinse and repeat every day. Beat Bowser, save the princess, over and over again. Um, my brother Chris took notice of how good I was at games, and um, he actually surprise enrolled me in, in the first Nintendo World Championships. And he signed me up and brought me there as a surprise. And I, I basically had to beat a bunch of kids in Queens at Mario 1 to advance to the World Championship, which I did. So the contest was actually uh, composed of three games. The first one was Mario Brothers, and that was the only one I was aware of. I pretty much sped through that round and advanced to the next round, which was uh, Rad Racer. Uh, I managed to place first in that also. I was pretty good at racing games just naturally. The third game was Tetris. You know, I was eight years old, nine years old at the time. If you can imagine, like Tetris is not, it's probably not the first game you're gonna think a kid's gonna play. So I had never seen that game in my life and, and that was a game that knocked me out of the contest. Um, it also became my next um, Christmas present. Part of me wanted to redo, but that contest ended up being my first and last Nintendo World Championship. Even though I lost it, you know, it definitely opened my eyes to, to different possibilities, you know. That competition showed me how big the gaming scene was. You know, back then we didn't have the internet. There was no Instagram, there were no forums. Like, you really weren't aware beyond your own circle of friends of just how big games were. That competition definitely changed my whole perspective and outlook on gaming. The seeds were planted and I feel like that was the moment where I felt like I wanted to start making games or, or have that as a future career. You know, as, as a kid, there was like two options for me. Uh, one of them was to be a video game developer. The other one was to be an NBA player because I played hoops all the time and you know, I was a big Nick fan. We're on um, Myrtle Avenue in Forest Park. This was like my local basketball court, but this is where like 80% of my games would be played. We come here after school sometimes. I went to St. Francis Prep, but we'd always play against like Christ the King kids over here. I only ended up being 5'8", and you know, I was basically a street baller. So that NBA thing never happened, but you know, video game development was alive and well. You didn't have to be a giant to do that. You just had to have a passion for games and, and want to be a part of the process. And I definitely wanted to be a part of that process. We're at Lean Pizzeria. This is basically, you know, when I grew up, this is where I used to play most of my arcade games. They had a Street Fighter machine, Mortal Kombat, and I think they had Ninja Turtles back then. Where that Coke machine is is where the Street Fighter machine used to be. I was just playing on that shit all day. Like, literally, they used to, there used to be windows there, and they used to line the windows. I used to box hundreds of those. When I was young, it didn't even dawn on me what I was doing. I was, I was basically boxing pizzas for them. They were paying me and I was using that same money they paid me to put it right back into their arcade machine. So I was basically working for free. And I didn't know that at the time, but that just shows you like how much I really love video games. I would just like do anything to play Street Fighter. But yeah, I mean, it is. you live and learn. New Yorkers, I feel, have a ton of different interests and that was no different with me. Aside from games and basketball, in my late teens to my early 20s, uh, I really got absorbed into the car scene. I had a bunch of different Civic hatchbacks that I hooked up. And, you know, that's really stereotypical, but um, I also had an, an Evo 8, which was my favorite car. And, you know, I put like probably 60, 70 K into that car. And that was probably, you know, at the time sounds like a, a terrible investment because, you know, cars, they just depreciate the second you drive them off a lot. And here I was adding more money into that depreciation. It seemed like a knucklehead move at the time, but you know, you're willing to do anything for your, your passion. And I was passionate about it. Even though like outwardly, immediately, it just seemed like a bad investment. Uh, what I didn't realize was it would turn out, the car scene in general would turn out to be uh, the best investment I made ever because um, it 
basically led to, to two of my future careers, both in game development and photography. So my favorite game is Grand Theft Auto V. I know how that sounds, I'm not being paid to say that. It literally is just my favorite game. Like before I was at Rockstar, uh, my favorite game was Grand Theft Auto III. So it's been a blessing to, to be involved with the company and help evolve the franchise from that point. I started working at Rockstar Games in the early 2000s. One of my first big projects that I ever led was Midnight Club 3. You know, Rockstar, we're, we're well known for our driving games in particular, you know, Grand Theft Auto being the big one. But this is like one of those areas where just being in the car scene for so long, you know, helped me contribute to the games in a way that, you know, not many people can. Um, there's a lot of responsibility on us to, to make sure that the cars look, sound, and feel real. And I was always working with programmers and lawyers to make sure, you know, our vehicles were on point. Probably to a fault, you know, some programmers probably got annoyed with how, you know, particular I was with the vehicles. But, you know, I was really passionate about the car scene, so, you know, I guess everything happens for a reason. Um, I don't think my contributions would have been the same if I hadn't been in the scene so long. I didn't realize it at the time, but there was something else brewing there beyond gaming and my love of cars. You know, when you have a dope whip, you know, what do you want to do? You want to you show it off. And the one way you do that is by taking, you know, really good pictures of it. I would look at internet forums and, you know, I would, I would see these amazing photos and I became friends with a lot of like really cool car photographers. and. You know, same deal, like, you know, I would be asking them, like, you know, what camera do you use? What are your lenses? What are your settings here? And, you know, I was absorbing all this stuff back then. I always loved taking pictures, but I honestly didn't know shit about cameras. So, you know, a lot of the, the technical stuff I learned from the car scene. I knew that wide angle lenses made the car look more aggressive. Um, you know, I learned how to do rolling shots with the cars, you know, how to pan and like get motion in pictures. And cars in general, they're just very fast. So it's just like, if you're gonna shoot cars, you know, you have to be pretty fast, you know, when they're moving. And a lot of that would actually translate into my future career in um, street photography. Street photography, you have to be very fast. You know, the moments come and go, they're so fleeting. Like you have to be, you know, fast. And, and it's just like the car scene taught me that. My latest project, this one, is with Anbox. They're a family of gamers repping New York City. And what we're doing is we're collaborating creatively to tell the story of New York City gaming. Um, New York is, is very different. You know, as you know, the swag is different here, the style is different, um, and that applies to gaming too. And we're just trying to tell that story through um, creatively through visuals and also fashion. I'm a big fan of streetwear and street style in particular. Um, you'll find that if you look closely at my street photography, um, often it's a blend of a scene and people that are dressed in an interesting way. Personally, you know, I care a lot about what I wear also, and I think as creatives, we're always just trying to express ourselves in different ways, whether it's, you know, customizing your cars or editing your photos or, you know, customizing your video game console. You know, creatives, we're always just trying to, to be unique and different, and one of those ways is through fashion. As part of my collaboration, um, I'm working closely with Maxwell Osborne and the Anbox team on a unique apparel collection. Uh, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. I've always wanted to, to make clothes, but I, I've never had the time. And it's, it's interesting to me how like all these paths that I took have, have led me to you know what I've always wanted to do, and this being one of them. This collaboration in particular, I feel like you know we're blending all of these these paths into one unique collection. Gaming is so massive right now. I feel like, you know, that's the next wave. When I was a kid, you know, that Nintendo World Championships, for me, that was the peak. You know, we didn't have anything else back then. It's interesting now though, because we have esports and pro gaming. You know, these kids are signing contracts and getting endorsements just like, you know, athletes. Um, gamers are, are pretty much the new athletes. Uh, it's, it's fun to watch, you know. When I was a kid, like, you know, there was no pro gaming, but you know, I was a big basketball fan and I, I always wore Jordan 1s because, um, you know, Michael Jordan was my favorite player. And now we live in a world where kids are basically lacing up sneakers and putting on certain clothes because their favorite gamer wears them. Um, I think that's pretty cool. You know, we're always, we're always looking for, for the next MJ, the next Michael Jordan, but the next MJ might not even be an athlete, might not even be a basketball player. The next MJ could be a gamer and that's awesome because you know, that could be anyone. 
gaming has a unique moment in time right now of like being properly introduced to the world. And if I could be a part of that, to champion that message through somebody who's been there from the beginning, and then be able to be in a position to like be the face of something or be help, help usher in, you know, this new generation and get respect for it, well, I'm all for it.